As much as we all loved the character of Arthur Morgan and the remainder of the Van der Lint gang, apart from Michael Bell of course, is it time we face facts? Were they the bad guys and was Agent Milton right all along? Well that's what we'll be discussing today. Welcome to the video, you're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming. If you enjoy the following, you all know what to do, and if you're new here and aren't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. After watching, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section provided, and please be aware, there will be major spoilers ahead for the story of Red Dead Redemption 2. With that being said, let's get on with what we came here to see. Hanging around gang campfires, you'll often hear stories from the crew's past, with many telling on how they landed themselves under the command of Dutch Vanderland. It's during one of these that you can learn of the gang's original formation, which began with both Dutch and Hosea attempting to steal from one another before figuring that teaming together would be better. Following this, they were later joined by a few others, including Arthur Morgan and John Marston. Although they were no doubt criminals, their original plans were to take from the rich and give to the poor, in a more modern Robin Hood sense, but ultimately, they began keeping the riches for themselves, making them nothing more than outlaws now. As the Van der gang grew, with more and more joining up, they would tell stories about past robberies, and of course, throughout our time in the game, we would perform our own, such as the train heist at the end of Chapter 2, the stagecoach robbery in Chapter 3, or the bank robbery in Chapter 4. It seemed to be now the only goal of Dutch in a gang, take from whoever for their own beneficial gain. Dutch would of course attempt to justify their actions by claiming they were living free, away from the restraints of the man, but did this require robbing and killing? If he truly believed in his own words, why not have the gang live off the land somewhere in a much more peaceful manner? He seemed just hell-bent on breaking the law. This brings us on over to Agent Milton, who's somewhat the primary topic of this video. By 1899, the age of outlaws and gunslingers was at an end. America was becoming a land of laws. Even the West had mostly been tamed. A few gangs still roamed, but they were being hunted down and destroyed. In our story, the head figure behind his statement is Agent Milton and the Pinkerton Detective Agency, and even though he's seen as the primary antagonist of Red Dead Redemption 2, is he simply being misjudged? Agent Milton sought to put an end to the gangs of the Wild West, those who thought upon themselves to follow their own rules. His end game was to make the world a more civilized place, and is that such a bad thing? Although he only appears in a handful of missions, let's look at his actions and decisions during each one and see if we can make sense of the situation. Firstly, a fisher of men. When Arthur takes young Jack Marston on a fishing trip near to the Horseshoe Overlook camp, the pair are approached by Agent Milton and his second in command, Agent Ross. In the following interaction. Hey, look at this. The what? This necklace I made. Necklace? For Mama. Sure. What a fine young man. And in such complex circumstances. Arthur, isn't it? Arthur Morgan? Who are you? Yes, Arthur Morgan. Vanderlyn's most trusted associate. You've read the files. Typical case. Orphaned street kids seduced by that maniac's silver tongue and matures into a degenerate murderer. Agent Milton, Agent Ross, Pinkerton Detective Agency, seconded to the United States government. Nice to finally meet. We know a lot about you. Do you? You're a wanted man, Mr. Morgan. There's $5,000 for your head alone. $5,000 for me? Gonna turn myself in? We want Vanderlyn. Old Dutch. I haven't seen him for months. That's so? Because I heard a guy fitting his description robbed a train belonging to Leviticus Cornwall up near Granite Pass. Oh, ain't that a little old-fashioned nowadays? Apparently not. Listen. This is my offer, Mr. Morgan. Bring in Vanderlyn. You have my word, you won't swing. Oh, I ain't gonna swing anyways, Agent uh, Milton. You see, I haven't done anything wrong, aside from not play the games to your rules. Spare me the philosophy lesson. I've already heard it from Mac Callender. Mac Callender? He was pretty shot up by the time I got to him. So really, it was more of a mercy killing. 
Slow, but merciful. <laughs> you enjoy being a rich man's toy, do you? I enjoy society, flaws and all. You people venerate savagery, and you will die. Savagely, all of you. Oh, we're all gonna die, Agent. Some of us, sooner than others. Good day, Mr. Morgan. Goodbye. Enjoy your fishing, kid. While you still can. <laughs> Milton had the perfect opportunity to either capture or kill Arthur Morgan, but chose a different path instead. He wants Dutch. Even with Arthur's $5,000 bounty, which today's equivalent would be around $185,000, he still sticks to his plan. But why? Dutch is the leader of this posse of outlaws, and Milton has done his homework. He knows a lot about Arthur, and the fact that he was brought in by Dutch at a young age. He knows Dutch has a silver tongue, and feels that Arthur may have been manipulated his entire life. He's more likely aware of the current size of the Vandalins gang, but feels that if he takes Dutch out of the equation, the rest will scatter amongst themselves. Arthur's angered reaction towards Milton prompts the agent to rebut with the slow and painful death of Mac Callender. He's more than likely doing this to let Arthur know that he's fully capable of killing the gang members and wanting to relay the message to Dutch and the rest of them all as a warning. He's on to them. Soon after, the gang flees south trying to avoid the authorities and the next time you see Agent Milton is when he walks right into Clement's Point camp in the following scene. Trust me. Hey Dutch, we got a problem. Not a problem. Visitors. A solution. Good day, fine people. Mr. Vanderland, Mr. Matthews, I presume. And who are you? Rip Van Winkle. Huh. Good day, sir. Agent Milton, Pinkerton Detective Agency. Agent Ross. Ah, Mr. Morgan, nice to see you again. And to what do we owe the pleasure, Agent Moron? I don't know if you're aware, but this... This is a civilized land now. We didn't kill all them savages only to allow the likes of you to act like human dignity and basic decency was outmoded or not yet invented. This thing, it's done. This place ain't no such thing as civilized. It's man, so in love with greed, he has forgotten himself and found only Appetites. And as a consequence, that lets you take what you please, kill whom you please, and hang the rest of us? Who made you the messiah to these lost souls you've led so horribly astray? I'm nothing but a seeker, Mr. Milton. You ain't much of anything more than a killer, Mr. Vanderlind. But I came to make a deal. It's time. You come with me, and I give the rest of you three days to run off disappear, and go and live like human beings someplace else. You came for me? Risk life and limb in this den of lowlifes and murderers so that they might live and love? Well, ain't that fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to kill all these folk, Dutch. Just you. In that case, it'd be my honor to join you. Excuse me, friends. I have an appointment to keep with. I think your new friend should leave now, Dutch. You're making a big mistake, all of you. <laughs> yeah, dreadful. We have got something. Something to live and die for. How awful for us. Mr. Milton, stop following us. We'll be gone soon. I'm afraid I can't. And when I return, I'll be with 50 men. All of you will die. Run away from this place, you fools. Run. Come on. Get your damn hands off of me, boy. First off, in this scene, can we just admire for a moment the absolute stones of Agent Milton for just walking right into their camp, even without a gun in his hand? He continues to push the idea of civilization, and he's right to do so. The Wild West was full of unnecessary killings from outlaws and bandits, terrifying the decent people of the land, so why would someone be against the idea of stopping this? 
he's still adamant that he only needs Dutch vandalins, even offering the remaining gang members an opportunity to flee and live in peace, still believing that if Dutch is gone, the rest would just become part of the civilized world he's trying to achieve. He even states that he doesn't want to kill everyone else, only Dutch. This again is him understanding that they've been brainwashed, so to speak, into following Dutch's every word. He may feel somewhat empathetic towards them because of this. Angered that the gang still refused to listen, Milton vows to return with 50 men, threatening the lives of each and every one of them. After learning the location of Clemens Point, he could have easily turned up with 50 men in the first place, but still wanted to give the gang members one last chance to see his way of things. We don't see the agent until much later, when the gang are attempting to perform a heist on the Lamont National Bank in saint -Denis. Himself, fellow Pinkerton detectives and the police force of saint -Denis all turn up pretty quickly. Whether they were tipped off to this is under speculation. I think we got a problem out here! Come out! It's over! Shit! Abigail! Dutch! Get out here! Get out here now! Someone must have squealed! You never should have gone after Bronte, Dutch. Mr. Milton? <clears throat> Let my friend go! Or folks, they are gonna get shot unnecessarily! Your friend? <laughs> Why would I do that? Come on, Milton! It's over! No more bargains, no more deals. Mr. Milton, this is America. You can always cut a deal. I've given you enough chances. Come on! Hosea Matthews, Dutch's right-hand man and best friend, is captured and held hostage by Milton. He uses Hosea as a bargaining chip, giving Dutch one last opportunity to turn himself in, but as soon as Dutch refuses and begins to plea for a deal, Milton has had enough. He's given the gang multiple opportunities so far to disband and flee, and they've refused to cooperate, so he has no intention of cutting a deal with them now. But why kill Hosea? Simply to send a message to the gang, same as he did with Matt Callender. The game has pushed Milton as the antagonist, especially after gunning down the much-loved Hosea. He does this feeling no remorse whatsoever, and it's something we'll come back to later in the video. As far as capturing John Marston, as opposed to just killing him, this was to use him as bait, feeling that the gang would no doubt attempt to spring him from his holdings. Milton kept his word, putting down the members of the Vandalin gang after they refused to comply. Even though most of the gang escape, it's not long before he learns of their location once more, this time in the cave. Shit! Give me a drink or something! Get your own damn drink! In our absence, Mrs. Adler here has been looking after things. Now sit down. This is Agent Milton with the Pinkerton Detective Agency! Already? On behalf oh, of Cornwall, Kerosene and Tor, the United States government, and the Commonwealth of West Elizabeth! Here we go. We are here to arrest you! Come out with your hands up! Give them to a count of five, then give them everything. Actually, let him have it. Put them down! Uh, ask everyone you could find, did you? Don't phone me, this is real bad. You stay down, Ollie. Uh, you mistook it for Why weakness. You... Now I will show strength, and you may mistake it for brutality. There is no escape for any of you. I shall hunt you to the ends of the earth and the end of time. I killed your friends. Start to irritate me. And you ah! each and every one of you. He's not playing games. Even though we request their surrender, this may be just to follow protocol. He doesn't even give them till a count of five before ordering his men to fire upon the residents. This would have been the fourth time he's offered them to comply, and knows that their answer this time will be no different than the first three. On top of this, he kept good on his promise that he would return with 50 men, leading to one of the biggest gunfights in Red Dead Redemption 2, to which the Vandalin gang are victorious. The next time we see Milton is in the shipping town of Ansberg, as he arrives at port from a boat belonging to Leviticus Cornwall. 
the pair interact, discussing Dutch Vandalins. I want to thank you for your hospitality, Mr. Cornwall. This was a business meeting, Mr. Milton. We are not friends. I have spent a considerable fortune with your agency and still nothing. This Vanderlyn robs me and laughs at me. I asked for the best. I paid for the best. We are very close, Mr. Cornwall. I know you've heard this before. Can't, sir. Send a telegram to Goldberg in New York. Tell him I won't borrow it more than 3.2%. Sorry, no, I have heard it before. And get that army man to pay his portage charge. Yes, sir. We are doing all we can within the confines of the law. The law? I think we both know what you can do with your law. Find me Dutch Vanderlyn. Bring him here and leave the laws to them as need them. Good day, sir. Come along, Mr. Ross. We have work to do. Something to make note of during this is how Milton declares that he's close and doing everything he can within the confines of the law. He believes in his job. He doesn't allow Dutch to feel he's above the law and the same goes for the oil tycoon, Cornwall. No matter how powerful a person believes themselves to be, Milton retains that the law is above everybody. The final time we meet Agent Milton is in the final mission of the story, titled Red Dead Redemption. Milton has played this one smart. He waited until the majority of the Vandalin gang were away from camp before sneaking up and kidnapping Abigail. This was once again an attempt to draw the gang in after they had freed John Marston from prison. Surrounding the town of Van Horn with Pinkerton agents that both Arthur and Sadie must battle through, Milton has one final showdown with Arthur. Calm down, Mr. Morgan. <coughs> That's quite a cough. Sure. Tuberculosis. I'll be dead soon. And you with me, Mr. Milton? You'll be dead. Sure, but I'm gonna be just fine. We offered you a deal, Mr. Morgan. You should have taken it. I'm a fool, Mr. Milton. Not all you boys have quite so many scruples. Old Micah Bell? Micah? You mean Molly? Molly O'Shea? Sweated her a couple of times, never talked a word, had to let her go. Micah Bell. We picked him up when you boys came back from the Caribbean, and he's been a good boy ever since. Okay. Okay. You're losing your strength, Mr. Morgan. You're still a yapping dog, Mr. Milton. <laughs> Horrible man. <laughs> Once again, Milton has the perfect opportunity to kill Arthur, but at first refuses. He's still wanting to bring Arthur to justice, following the rules of the law. Even when he talks about Molly not being the informant, he admits that he had to release her from custody due to a lack of evidence. This furthers his respect for the law. But why does he confess to Arthur about Micah's betrayal? I believe he was doing this as one last attempt at disbanding the group once and for all. Either that, or he feels that a now dying Arthur may deserve to know the truth about the life he's been leading. These are his final moments before he's put down by Abigail. To summarise, even though the Vandalin gang began their journey helping others, it soon became apparent that they turned into nothing more than a band of killers and thieves something of which Agent Milton was vowing to put an end to. He was trying to tame these wild lands, all the while still obeying the law, in which he upheld and followed the rules, even if characters such as Dutch Vandalin and Leviticus Cornwall would try to sway him. He became hated by players after killing Hosea Matthews, but let's look at that from an outside perspective. As the player, we lived with and formed relationships with the gang. We'd been through the ups and downs with them, creating a bond of love and loyalty. Agent Milton doesn't experience any of this. All he saw from a lawman's perspective was a band of outlaws, criminals and killers, and he was right to see things that way. He studied the case files of Dutch Vanderland and knew him very well. He believed the others were being manipulated by the man, which is why he made so many attempts to break the group up 
before ultimately using force as a last resort. Rockstar are very good at getting the player to love the character they're playing as. Even in L.A. Noir, where we take on the role of Cole Phelps, the character was also admired, even though his goals were very similar to that of Agent Milton, chasing criminals and cracking down on gangs. In RDR2, we're drawn to love the bad guys and hate the good guys, making Arthur the protagonist and Agent Milton the antagonist. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, you'll all know what to do. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts on Agent Milton and the Pinkerton Detective Agency. Were we wrong to hate them? If you aren't subscribed already, please consider doing so. You've been listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and I'll see you in the next one.